In our last video, we derived this expression for the Schrodinger equation. So this expression is completely equivalent to this above expression over here. And I promise you that this is going to come in handy later on. So we're going to move on with our derivation of the stationary states of the quantum harmonic oscillator. And then the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to define this operator over here. We're going to define this A operator. And then uh, this is not something we derive, this is something we define. And then we define this because this is going to come in very handy later on. So by doing this, I've defined two operators, a plus and a minus. Plus, uh, when this is plus, this is going to be minus. When this is minus, this is going to be plus. So we're going to explore some of the op uh, properties of this uh, operator over here. So the first thing we're going to look at is what will happen if we apply this operator to some function. So recall that these are operators. It's kind of like a derivative. So when you apply a derivative to a function, you kind of change it. So this is pretty much similar. You apply this to a function and then you change it. So this expression over here, this is like a larger operator. So you apply these two operators in succession. So you're going to apply this to some function xi and then you're going to change it into something else. So we want to find an expression for, for this thing over here. And we want, we want to define it with the symbols that we have over here. So uh, the way Griffiths uh, uh, derives his result is that he kind of treats this like a polynomial and starts doing multiplication. Uh, I think that's kind of conceptually inaccurate, so I like to, when I'm doing these problems, I like to put in this uh, dummy function over here to see how this uh, operator will, will change this function. Because if you start treating this like a polynomial, you might accidentally make some mistakes. You never know, so it's much safer to actually put in a function over here. So enough said. Uh, let's try to uh, try to find an expression for this thing over here. So by applying a minus and a plus, I can pull out the constants first. So we have two of these expressions. So they come together and they, you can remove the square root sign. And then we have uh, two, these two expressions. So for minus, this becomes plus. And then for plus, this becomes minus. So this becomes one giant operator. And then we're going to apply this to the function xi. And so when we apply these two operators to a, uh, to a function, the first operator that's going to be acted on the function will be this operator over here. So when this, op this operator is applied to xi, it becomes a negative i p xi, so that's essentially taking the derivative. And then x is just a scalar, so we just uh, multiply it together. So this becomes a new function, and then this becomes our next operator. So we're going to use this operator and then we're going to apply it to this function over here. So let's see what happens when we apply this term to this term first. So the i's, they both uh, come together to give you a negative one. It cancels out with this negative one to give you a positive one. So essentially, we have p squared as i. So we apply the momentum operator twice. And then we apply this to this part over here. So we can pull out the constants first. So here we're applying the uh, momentum operator to x times i. So x times i becomes a new function, and then we're applying this new operator, uh, this operator p, to this new function here, x xi. And so here you see kind of why I put I'm using this uh, dummy function over here because if I didn't use this, this this is going to look something like p times x because but it isn't because there is going to be a function over here, and then because this is a derivative, this is going to cause some cause some uh, uh, cause some kind of trouble over here. So if you start treating this like a polynomial, start doing multiplication, you're very prone to make uh, accidental mistakes. So it's very, it's much easier, uh, it's much more accurate to actually put in a dummy function over here. So I'm moving on to it with our proof. We apply this part over to this part over here. So once again, we pull out the constants. And this time we have uh, x, p, xi. So this time the x is on the outside. So this the it's not affected by the derivative over here. And then we have our m omega x squared, so we're applying this to this, this to this, xi. So uh, I'm going to rewrite this in a slightly different form. So I'm going to group up some of the terms. I'm going to group up the p squared and the m squared omega squared x squared. And I'm doing that because, as you can tell, this actually looks suspiciously like what we had derived earlier. And over here we have these uh, remaining terms over here. So what remains now is to kind of 
and we have to simplify this remaining tricky expression over here. And the main trouble comes from this part over here. So let's try to focus on this part and see how we can further simplify it. So we have x p applied to xi, and then we have negative p applied to x times xi. So here we're going to use the definition of the momentum operator. So we're going to apply this directly. So we have d xi dx, and here we have essentially a derivative applied to x times i. So we're going to use the product rule to take the derivative. So using the product rule, differentiate this first becomes 1. So we got uh, xi. And then now we're going to differentiate this. So we get minus x d xi dx. And then thankfully, these cancel out. So in the end, we're left with minus h divided by i xi. And then I'm, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the imaginary number. So this just becomes negative 1, becomes positive 1. So we're left with i h uh, xi. So uh, what we've just found out is that this entire expression over here can be expressed as i h xi. And then this is actually a really, really important result. And then in later chapters, you'll find that this is actually the reason why the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is true. So you get to that later on in the later chapters. And uh, some scientists uh, try to summarize this kind of information by introducing this square bracket notation over here. So A and B are both operators. And uh, this square bracket essentially means AB minus BA. And then in this case, you can kind of view this as XP minus PX applied to Xi. So you can see that uh, we essentially have, uh, for our first operator, is X and P. So this is XP minus PX. And then we just found out that xp minus px is going to equal to i times the reduced Planck constant. So this is one way you can use a square bracket notation to summarize what we just found. So keep this in mind that later chapters of this will come back up, and this will be a very important result. But going back to this original problem, we just found out that this expression here can be expressed as i times h times xi. So let's try to further simplify this ugly expression we have here at the bottom. So we have some of these constants, and then we have this p squared times plus n omega x squared, and then we have uh, minus i m omega, and then we just found out that this is equal to i h omega uh, psi. So immediately you see that these i's, they come together to give you a negative one, it cancels out with this to give you a positive sign. And then here I'm going to group up some of the terms. So uh, if you see what I'm doing here, I'm pulling up the h and the omega. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, as you can tell, this expression, it looks suspiciously like what we had over here. And then recall that for the Schrodinger equation, you can essentially express it as the Hamiltonian operator um, applied to the function xi. So in this case, this is actually the Hamiltonian operator applied to xi. So as you can, so this is why we actually bother to define to derive this expression over here. And then for this expression over here, we can just cancel out with the constants over here. So in the end, we're left with something that looks rather neat. So we get this expression over here. So we call on the left hand side. This is a minus a plus. So the this operator that we defined. Uh, we can so this operator that we defined a minus and a plus when you apply them both together this is actually equal to uh, 1 over the 1 over h omega times the Hamiltonian operator plus 1 half so this is the main result that we've obtained from this video and then this is going to come in very handy later on and uh, one alternative way to express this result is to so the result that we just obtained so there's an alternative way to kind of express this. So it's really just a slight rearrangement of terms. So we can express the Hamiltonian operator as this expression over here. And this is actually the expression, the expression that we're going to use later on. And then uh, something else that you should also keep in mind, uh, all, everything that we've done just now, you can do the exact same thing for a plus a minus. So just now we did a minus a plus. You can do the same thing for a plus a minus, and then you're going to get something that looks pretty similar. So I'm not going to derive this again. It's, the procedure is basically the same. 
so with a slight change in some of the positive and minus uh, signs. And if you go through all the trouble, you'll see that you'll, uh, you'll arrive at this result. And then uh, these two results are actually what we're going to use later on.